<laughs> hey everyone! So excited. I hope you guys are tuning in right now. I'm going to give you everyone a few more minutes to pop into our live video to join us today. But if you're tuning in, I'm already seeing some hellos from all over the country. So hello and good afternoon, everyone. It is Melissa with Anita Good Design, and I'm so excited to share today's live stitch out with you guys. If you're new to our stitch outs, you'll know every Wednesday we go live on Facebook to show you guys an awesome and fun tutorial step by step, um, just how we do it here at Anita. And the best part is that we actually post these videos both to our page and our YouTube channel. So if you're tuning in and can only stay for part of the video, you can always come back to it later. And you also can pause and go back and play other portions of it as well. So if you are tuning in now and you're wanting to know what we're stitching today, we are going to be doing our Anita's Express 3D Posy Bunches. So I got that in there for you. There we go, we can kind of see it. Very cute, they are something you can display in the embroidery hoop. And this is actually a very simple project that I'm excited to show you guys just how we create these 3D flowers. Um, but I'll let a few more people pop on. I'm seeing hi from Tucson, Baton Rouge, California, Long Island. We have so many people joining us today. Um, it's a special day here at Anita. If you are not familiar, it's also our owner, Stephen Wilson's birthday. So happy birthday to Steve. And we're gonna celebrate with a bunch of pretty flower bouquets. So. When I start my projects, I like to have everything set up around me, so while we wait for a few more people, I'll explain everything I have at my work table for you guys. I always have a copy of our printed out tutorial, so if you don't have your All Access magazine or if you are not subscribed, you can print off the tutorial as the PDF as well. Um, if you do have your magazine, you can easily find it in the book. I'm holding June's issue, but do know the project we are doing today, the Anita's Express 3D Posy Bunches, came out in September of 2019. So this is a past release and it is on special for you guys today. So if you're tuning in and you're wanting to stitch out the project that we're doing, you can head to our website, anitagooddesign.com, and it is available for $10 off. And we've already applied the discount for you, so you guys can go ahead, add it to your cart and stitch it out with me, or you can stitch it out later on and check back with the video. So on top of the tutorial, I also have the instructions printed out. So if you guys can kind of see there, I have my numbered step-by-steps. -step. It's a little bright for you, but have my machine steps nice and handy. And then this project really doesn't require that many notions. So for my hoop, I have taken a piece of tearaway stabilizer as well as this fun printed, like um, looks like turquoise on your screen, but it's nice blue. And so that's gonna be the base material for our project today, as well as that tearaway stabilizer. And then on top of that, we have some organza. So if you tuned in last week to Lauren's live stitch out, you'll remember she did some organza um, watercolor confetti. So this is the same kind of concept. We're using the same type of material, which is that nice, sheer, shiny organza. Um, I have people ask all the time where we get this from. And we do get it from local dealers or online. So always check with your local fabric shop first. Um, but I cut up several pieces of different colors here and I've already loaded my design to the machine. So we're gonna go ahead and get started so you guys can follow along with me stitching the 3D Posy Bunches. So with my design loaded into the machine, I have my hoop stuck in here and I also lined up my threads and I have all my instructions handy. So we're gonna go ahead and start the embroidery. And for the first step of the design, it's just simple stitching. And I chose a purple thread and I already put it in the top of my machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower my foot and start those fun, what they call berries. Now the design I'm doing is number four. We are doing it in the B size file. So it comes in two sizes, an A size and a B size. And the one I'm doing measures around 4.8 by 6.4. So I'm stitching it in a six by 10 hoop right here. Um, but if you have a hoop bigger or anything that fits it, that'll work as well. And so we do offer two sizes. Now the final result, I only have the picture of it here for you guys to see, but it does get displayed in like a wooden hoop like this. So I went ahead and grabbed some wooden hoops here for you guys to see, and I'll show you kind of how to pop it in there at the end and how it can be displayed. Now, let's see, I have some hellos, everyone's saying hi. I hope you guys are excited and ready to stitch out these cute flowers. Now I got a lot of questions in the past when this first came out, how exactly we make them that 3D element. So I'm gonna show you guys a little inside tip on how we do that when we get to the flower part. But in the theory of these is I'll show you some pre-made ones. They make these cute little petal blooms. So they're almost like irregular circles and we singe them 
and I'll walk you guys through that process as well. But by making little round circles, we can layer them up and create these 3D bunches that are gonna get secured to the design. So very fun. And we're running those berries first. And again, this project's entirely up to you what you put it on. Um, the original collection was done on a muslin fabric, but we're picking a fun set of um, colors today and following a different thread pattern. But creativity is the best part. Um, I see someone ask Joe Beckett, what size hoop are we using? I did mention I have a six by 10 hoop, so as long as your design will fit within the embroidery frame, you can size up the hoop or down as needed, um, but there are two sizes to this collection. Hello from Missouri, and where is everyone at? Look at us, Switzerland. Hi from Switzerland, that's exciting. Love, love to see you guys tuning in from all over. And again, this collection came out in September of 2019. So if you're one of my ladies who have had all access in the past, you might be familiar with this design or recognize it. If you don't know about all access, we do this fabulous monthly subscription where we produce a beautiful full color magazine for you guys full of different designs, everything from quilting to embroidery and even projects that use both. Um, and we show all kinds of beautiful designs every month. You get what's pictured on the back of the book. And this collection released in 2019. So if you were a member of our All Access subscription, in September, you actually received this design as well. Now, if you are not in All Access, you can join for $1,400 a year. We also offer a digital option. Now, I have a lot of people who've been excited about digital lately. It's getting very interactive, and people love to flip through the designs digitally and go back and forth between their steps. You see me here using paper, so some people prefer paper, and we want to cater to both. So, we have options for all of our ladies. We got these cute little berries going. I hope you guys are all excited you're tuning in with this. I hope some of you are stitching it out with me today. I see, do I have any other questions? I have some people in the back helping me with any questions. So if you guys are stitching this out and are curious about anything, shoot me a question and Lauren is in the back answering those. And I also need to change my thread. All right. So I'll pull this out just a little bit so you guys can kind of see. So we got the little berries started here in the design. My next color is going to be yellow flower buds. So I have a yellow thread here. I keep forgetting my camera's to my right. <laughs> there you guys go. So we are gonna take that one and pull it through. Now always take your thread out through the bottom of the machine. And try to be good about practice what you preach. And I tell my ladies to do that as well. So I got my next color threaded in there. Like I mentioned, this one's fairly simple. So it's a lot of embroidery first and then we'll get to the fun part of the posy flowers. So now it's doing two little flower buds. And there are several different types of designs in this collection. Um, I wanna say there's, let's see, three, six, 10 different flower bunches um, that come in different arrangements. It's so bright, it's hard to see, I know. <laughs> I was trying to show you guys. Um, but we have different ones. The one I'm doing is gonna feature a cute little watering can with the flowers coming out of it but the one we had on our cover design was more rounded shapes. So depending the style and how you're going to uh, display them, you can pick different uh, orientations of those flowers. I see someone, <laughs> Kathy says, some guys stitch out too, just saying. You're right, Kathy, I have some men that might be tuning in. And gentlemen, I hope you're stitching out these pretty flowers for the lovely lady in your life. Or for yourself, because you know, men deserve flowers too. Very cute. So if you're tuning in, I know some people come in a few minutes late. We are starting the Anita's Express 3D Posy Bunches today. And I'm gonna walk you guys through how we make those flowers as well as how they're attached in the hoop. So there's no additional sewing or anything required for it. And if you do not own this collection, for those of you that are just coming in, we can grab a copy of it online. We have a promo sale going for you guys where it is $10 off if you purchase it before 11.59 Eastern time tonight. So I know you guys love good deals and so we're trying to cut you a good deal so you can get to stitching with us. So if you have not already purchased this one, just know that if you head to our website, there should be a link in the top of today's video description. You guys can follow that and purchase that design at a discounted rate. Mm -hmm. 
And organza is so fun, you guys. You can do so much with it. I'm like super focused on threading my needle. But if you tuned in last week, you'll see some of the things you can do with this sheer pieces organza. Lauren did a watercolor confetti, which uses the same material, but cut up in smaller pieces and kind of sprinkled over a placement area and then covered with a larger piece. The way we're using the organza today, we'll kind of leave it in its raw form and just tacked down in the center. And that kind of lets it curl and move on its own like little flower bunches, which I particularly love. I think things that look too perfect sometimes are not as fun. Best part about this is that no one's flowers will ever look the same. So even if you and your girlfriend are sitting next to each other, um, gabbing about stitching and running your designs, hers is gonna look different than yours because no one cuts out organza exactly the same. And the way we're going to singe it later will change too. So lots of fun ways you can customize this yourself. Um, you also can use different shades. So for my flowers today, we're doing pinks and oranges and different shades of warm tones, but you can also add in cool colors as well. Hey guys, I see you guys commenting questions. Do I have love all the animals and sunbonnet suit? Oh yeah, you guys are talking about our recent releases. Those are great. Um, we have some great stuff in June coming out as well. So if you saw me hold up a sneak peek of this June issue, this one is coming out soon to your guys that ordered it or if you have it on subscription, you're receiving your book very soon. Um, we have lots of fun things with animals and really vibrant colors coming out as well as some fun summer projects for you. So we're gonna keep you busy this summer <laughs> with all the fun embroidery. I think Melissa, do you wanna do a prize? Yes, so we do have some prizes to give away. I have Lauren saying we should give them something away. I know you guys love free stuff, right? So if you are tuning in, you're in for a treat. We are gonna do, what do you guys say? Like a $20 gift card? Let's do a $20 gift card to our website. Um, and remember, we'll do them every Wednesday. So if you missed out on previous, uh, previous weeks, I was gonna say, I almost said issues, <laughs> previous weeks videos. Uh, we do giveaways throughout the Stitch Out so you guys can get rewarded just for tuning in. So let's make the keyword um, flower. So if you guys comment flower in the sections below for the comment of the video, we'll have someone behind the camera pick a winner and we'll send you a $20 gift card to use on our website. So keyword flower, since that's what we're making today. Now if you like this organza, Similar to how Lauren did the watercolor confetti, we have other projects on our website that do use this organza in different ways. Um, you can find it multiple ways by searching that by technique. Uh, you can search the keyword organza. But we also have one, and I wish greatly I had a sample to show you, but I do not. Um, but we released Organza Garden, let me make sure I have the date right, in June of 2019 as well. So the 3D Posy bunches that we're stitching out came out in September. And then in June, a little bit before that, we also did something with the organza and that was Organza Garden. And in this one, they are done a little more like applique style, but the flowers look like they're watercolor painted. So another way you can use that organza is with that Organza Garden collection. And we are offering a flash sale on that one. So if you're tuned in, we are offering this collection for $10 off and the Organza Garden, we're doing it 50% off. So if you head to the site, or hit the link in the top of the video description. The Organza Garden did come out in June and that one will be 50% off until 11.59 tonight as well. So make sure you get those deals, you guys. I know they expire tonight at midnight our time, so we want you to be able to snag them while they're discounted. I see all these flower comments. You guys are making it look like spring in the comment section. Oh yes, very nice. I love this bright green. So I picked a nice bright green here. You can see at the top of my spool, this mint color. We just wanted to make it nice and vibrant. So we have some pretty spring-like colors. I think personally, these look beautiful displayed in your sewing area or up on the walls. And why do just one? You can make like a whole set and make it a little like wall art installation. All right, I'm actually gonna keep the same color because this is again, some leaves and stems. So we're gonna stick with that green. Your and Elise tells me we have a winner for our $20 gift card. Who's our winner? It's Miss Janet Warner. Miss Janet Warner. Congratulations, Miss Janet. You are our winner for our gift card. So please just reach out to the link right there. There it is. <laughs> Marketing at anita-gooddesign.com and they will be in touch with that gift card for you. So just shoot on over your name and let them know you're a winner during Melissa's live stitch out and we'll be sure to reward you with that gift card. Very fun. 
And then again, if you tuned in a little late and you missed me showing out my pre-cut petals and singed ones, I'll show you kind of an idea of what we're doing with these. So we have multiple colors of organza that you can kind of see here in my workstation. And they don't have to be cut any specific way, but I like to say kind of like semicircles or organic shapes. And I'll show you a fun tip that Lauren just showed me earlier behind the scenes for how we can make singeing this even easier. But you'll notice when I hold several together, they create like a flower-like shape. So very fun and curly. And we got all kinds of different sizes of petals as well, which comes in handy. You'll notice when we start the layering, you'll kind of want some pieces cut at different sizes so it creates the layers of the flower. And I'll save some of these to use as well. You guys are so nice. I'm reading these comments as we're stitching. I'm seeing them say, congratulations, Jeanette. So they're all like, if I didn't win, congrats to her. <laughs> So stay tuned, you guys might, still might win something. All right. Still got these leaves going. Now I wanted you guys to know if you love these live stitch outs that we're doing, we are doing them every Wednesday. So if you keep tuning in on Wednesdays, you'll get a new lesson from one of our educators, myself or any of the other number of them. Um, they all do a great job explaining the project, giving their own bits and pieces of information to make your project successful. And then on top of that, starting in June on Friday, so the first date will be June 4th, we are teaching 201, the I Can Quilt curriculum, um, virtually. So we will be teaching those classes once a week on Fridays, and you can sign up and purchase this class in advance, so be sure to check out our events page on our website and sign up if you have not yet, and you can purchase the binder with all the designs as well. So it'll be just like attending a class, but each week we're gonna break down the projects and show you how to do them in person, so you guys get to watch them which I think is going to be a fun thing. And I heard a little bird tell me that I get to go first. So if you tune in next Friday, it'll be me as well as Drea stitching out the project for you guys. Um, and my project's going to be paper piecing applique. So we'll get to do some fun stuff with that in the 201 curriculum. And I hope you guys will tune in then as well. So I can still participate. Yes, if you're tuning in, you guys can still hang out and participate. Um, it's Kat Martinez. You asked what the hoop size is. I'm stitching this in a 6x10 hoop, but you can use a hoop larger or smaller based on your size of your design. So if you guys are curious, our A size would be 5.8 by 7.7. 7 7. So you would need a larger hoop for that one. And then the size I'm doing is the B size. That one's at 4.8 by 6.4. So that does fit in our 6x10 hoop. Melissa? Yes. Can you let them know that you haven't showed them yet how to make the flowers? Yes, are they asking? We're having people ask how to make the flowers. I've not gotten there yet, stay tuned. So I am showing you guys that they're finished already, some of them, but I have some uncut pieces here and I will walk you guys through that. I'm trying to time it so that I can do it while it's still stitching for you. When we get to the watering can part, I'll start singeing these and showing you guys how we do it. That's a good question. I'm glad you guys are paying attention. They're like, where'd she get the flowers from? Where are those coming from? We gotta make them. So if you're wanting to have tools, if you are stitching this out with me and you want to know what you need nearby, um, I didn't even have fancy scissors today. We just got regular nice scissors that can cut through fabric or organza. And then I also have a candlestick lighter. Now, fire safety 101. <laughs> Make sure you know what you're doing if you're using real flame. You can do this with a hot tool as well. So if you own a hot tool for embroidery or projects, you can do what I'll show you later with a hot tool as well. We're gonna take the easy customer way and do it with a lighter, um, but I will show you how to do that safely and properly. That way you guys can reference back to the video and kind of see how we did it to make them look so curly and cute. I see someone asking what's in hoop, what's in the frame? I don't have anything in these, but if you're asking about the embroidery frames, these are the ones that we will hoop the final project in. I'm actually gonna go with the smaller one. But these are those standard wooden embroidery hoops. They do come with those two piece set right here. And we're going to suspend our nice base fabric. So I did pick a fun color for today's project. That way you guys could see kind of it floating in the hoop. Um, but they can be done on any fabric you prefer. I have had people ask what to stitch them on, like if they could put it on a shirt or something similar to that. Because of the delicate nature of the organza, I think these are better for display. Um, or a gift bag or something that won't get laundered or heavily washed a lot. 
Um, but definitely something you can get creative with and try it on different projects. It will get attacked down, so it will be sewn into your project. Um, but I would avoid heat and such like that just to not damage the organza. We are finishing up our leaves soon here. And let's see, my next color, we're going to be doing that watering can next. So then I get to show you guys a little bit more of this singeing process. So I'm going to keep the ones that I had nicely made for me ahead of time off to the side and I'll still pull some of those petals as we're building them. But I'm going to show you guys how to do it with the actual squares of organza as well. So first safety, I'm going to make sure I have all my flammable things like paper out of the way. And just keep my organza nearby. And layer a few different pieces. So if you're able to see my workstation, I have some pink and some orange. And I'll put another piece of pink down and we'll let that sit for a second while we change out our thread. Whoop, I just bumped that with my own arm. Usually I would reset the machine if I bump it, but it didn't look like it moved. So we're just gonna keep on trucking. <laughs> we're just gonna keep going. All right, gray thread is here. So next part of my design is I'm on step five out of 12 for design number four out of the 3D Posy Bunches. And the next step for me is going to be the watering can. And it's going to do an outline of it so you guys can see where that goes. If anyone's asking, there is no applique in this design collection. It's literally just embroidery on your base fabric as well as the organza. So not too much required out of it. All right, so while that's stitching out, we're gonna go ahead and show you guys how I do this part. So I'll make sure I kind of turn towards you a bit more and then you can still see my work surface. So I'm gonna take, a, let's say three pieces just to show you kind of how to start it. And my favorite thing to do is instead of keeping them square is just kind of round off the edges. So I'm gonna take my scissors, just cut a nice big almost oval shaped circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's kind of the beauty of it. There we go. I'm just gonna move my scraps out of the way. Now, there's more than one way you can do the singeing. I'll show you two ways to hold it before I do it. The first way is to hold it like a disc with your hands in the center and to work your way around and then kind of spinning it as you go. The other way is to pinch it like this. Make like a taco almost and then you can singe along the edges. I'm gonna do it this way, that way I don't have to spin it through my hand to keep burning it. But I almost folded it like a little taco. I'll show you flat and vertical so you guys can see. And then I'm gonna take my stick lighter that I have right here, one that you use for long candles. I prefer and would suggest this kind over a hand lighter, that way you are distant from the flame. We don't want it close to your fingers. And then you're going to quite literally take the fire and just kind of touch it along the edges. Now Lauren gave me this fabulous tip to share with you guys that if you do it the way I'm showing you where we hold several pieces together and singe them at the same time, they'll actually kind of stick together and create flowers nested within one another. So again, show you at a different angle. Hey, Melissa, can you yes. Your, with your hands so that you can see a little bit better. There you go. Is this better? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Make sure you guys can see. I know the camera is overhead, so I gotta make sure I can see it. So there's this way. You can also go at it towards the sides if you want it to curl a little bit more in certain spots. And if you're scared of fire or you have a fear of fire, again, you can use a hot tool. <laughs> this is just the way we've found was the fastest, easiest, and efficient way to get it to look the way we want. So I did a light singe just to show you guys that little set of flowers right there if I open them up. And then maybe I can show you guys a little bit better here. You can kind of see that I cut those three in a set and then when I singe them they do kind of stay together in like a little bloom. And if I pull them apart that gave me three different pieces of the flower. So they're all about the same size. Earlier I mentioned you want to cut different sizes that way when you nest them into each other you kind of get that built up flower shape. We're gonna hold on this real quick while we change out our thread. Hope you guys are following along with this fine. Lauren, do I have anyone asking questions that I need to answer? No. Okay, good. That means I'm answering all your questions. <laughs> That's the important thing. All right, so the next part is a little decorative band on this watering can. So I'm gonna do white thread there. 
Very nice. And we're gonna hit start back up on that thread. So with that one set of petals, this was three pieces that I cut right here that you can see. Those are my three pieces. I have two pink and an orange, and I'm gonna kinda layer it with the orange in the middle, and that creates that richer tone that we were talking about before when you layer organza, how it creates more dark colors as you tighten it up or like fold it in on itself or add more layers. So I might say we could do those as the three flowers and then add our other fun pieces to the rest of it. So I'll take another one that, let's see, we have already singed and then show you again a little bit more, just one piece at a time, how we did that. So trying to show you between two different cameras. I'll show you on this flat surface first and then I'll try to get a little closer for you. But again, I take it, if you wanna hold it more towards the edge, you can rather than in the middle. And we just singe it a little bit and you see how it curls in on itself like that. It creates like that little quick fire and kind of melts technically. And if you're really close to it, it might smell a little. Do this in a well-ventilated room, preferably. But we'll create those little petal shapes by just singeing the organza some more. And then now you can see how that one is smaller, so it would nest in the middle. So then I can just take different pieces of organza, and if I need them to be smaller, I can either cut them or just singe them down a bit more. So then that red piece will nest nicely inside of the pink, and I can take some orange and a purple. And it makes like a little flower bloom. So now, we should have our placement and tack downs for the actual posy bunches. So now I'll show you guys how they actually get added into the hoop. So for the center of the flowers and for my marking stitch, I'm gonna choose a bright yellow, nice and easy to see. And I want the center of my flowers to be yellow as well. So we're gonna go ahead and thread that color in. And the first step will be to show you exactly where it's going to go. All right, so we're gonna run our placement and then I'll pull the hoop out and show you guys a little bit more direct with my hand where that marking stitch is at for this particular design. And it's going to do each posy bunch one at a time. So there are three flowers in this design piece um, for number four. And we're going to have that marking stitch to just show one at a time so you don't have to tape down a whole bunch of organza. I'm gonna turn the hoop so you guys can see. My marking stitch is right where my hand is at. It's a little small for you. See if I can show you guys in the other camera. Right there, there's a little yellow stitch mark. That's going to be where you place the center of the posy bunch. So what I'm gonna do is take the pieces of organza that I've already singed, that I have right here, and I'm gonna layer them. I might add one or two more pieces. I want really rich colored flowers. So I'm gonna add some purple and another piece of red underneath, and then add my smallest two pieces to the center. So now I have about one, two, three, four, five, about six or so layers of organza. This is gonna be for one flower, and you can do more or less as you please. But we are gonna lay it directly over where my marking stitch was. And then the easiest way would be to do tape. If you're confident in doing it with just your hand, feel free. And I'm gonna go on the side of air tape things down. That way you guys who are not comfortable with your hands will know exactly where we're taping and how we do it. So I just took two pieces of tape. I'm gonna flatten that posy bunch and just slap it down with some tape that might not even been long enough. There we go. Secret note, you need to tape to the fabric and not to the item you're taping or it's just gonna come off. So tape to the base material. And make sure you actually secure it to something so it doesn't fly away. There we go. So I just kind of flattened the bunch and put two pieces of tape down. The center is somewhere roughly in the middle of that. The beauty of this is there's no exact science. You just line it up to the spot where you want it tacked down. And of course it's showing me a totally different spot than where I wanted it. <laughs> you can always adjust as you put it back in the hoop. So there I have my tape secure and where the needle is at is where it's going to end up stitching. So I'm just going to go ahead and tack it down and then I'll show you guys what that looks like once we take the tape off. And the tack down for this is just a little satin stitch spot in the center, so nothing super fancy or ornate. Don't wanna take away from the pretty bloom itself. And then there is the center of that posy bunch, and now we can gently remove the tape. You don't wanna to pull too hard because you don't wanna tear the organza. 
save some tape on the side here. There we go. And then you can see your little posy bunch. So there it is, kind of more dimensional for you. See if I can get it to focus. Isn't that cute? Such a bright, fun color. So I have one done. Now my next piece of advice would be to continue to use that tape to kind of secure them out of the way. So now that I know this one's tacked down, you don't want the other posy bunch to get in the way of it. So I'm just going to take a piece of tape and just secure it so it's not directly in the way. Let's see, the next dot is right on the center stem, of course. And I'm actually just taping it to the side of the hoop. So if you can see in my shot below, I folded that flower in half and then just put a piece of tape over to hold it out of the way. The stem that the next marking stitch is on is right where my finger is at, so I didn't want those petals to be obstructing where that stitch is going to go. So just like before, with each posy, you're going to have a little spot stitch to show you where it's going to run it. Now again, while I start trimming out and preparing the next flower, I wanted to remind people, if you don't already have this collection, what it's called and where you can find it. We are doing the Anita's Express 3D Posy Bunches that came out September of 2019. And this collection is available for $10 off on our website. So if you're joining in towards the end of my video and you're saying, I need that collection, I don't have it yet, or you just wanna try making one of these fun flower sets with me, you guys can always watch this video again. Um, but head to our website and snag that product before 11.59 Eastern Standard Time tonight. Um, that sale will be over. And we have already applied that sale price for you. So when you go to checkout, it'll already be discounted. And then if you're enjoying the fun with the organza, again, there I am just singeing it gently with the flame. We also have the Organza Garden Collection that released of June for 2019. Um, and that one is also available at a discount. We are doing that one at half off. So you guys can have all the fun with the Organza. I know some of you don't have any Organza, so you're probably out buying some or ordering it. And now you'll have multiple projects you can do with all those tubes of Organza you'll get. Got a little scrap piece in here that I don't want. There it is. <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna lay my two larger pieces or three larger pieces there. Actually might trim these down a little. Some of these were big and that's okay. I want flowers of different sizes though. So I can just show you trimming. Beauty of the organza singeing is that if you don't like it, you can always trim that singed edge off and just make it a little smaller and keep going. So again, move any flammable cotton out of the way. And I'm gonna do it that little taco method I showed you by just pinching it. And then singe my petals again. So, we have that nice curly effect happening now. And then the other way I wanted to show you guys is if you hold it, let's see, where's my camera lens? There you guys go. So if I hold them flat, not like a taco, so opened up into little disc shapes again, you can take it and run that lighter again underneath or on the sides to give them each a little bit curlier shape. There we go. So then I'm gonna take my different layers, take a piece of orange in here, and we'll line it up again where that placement stitch is at. Find our tape. Just take a nice big piece. And tape that back down. I hope you guys are finding this as easy as I said it is. I don't think they're that hard. I think they're pretty fun and crafty. This is a fun one to get younger kids involved in as well. They can sit there and cut out the organza while you do the singeing or they can arrange which colors go into the flower and then you can show them how you make this fun 3D piece. Kids like to help make choices. So I like to think of projects that maybe they can't do all of it, but they can watch or help participate. Um, and anything with 3D elements are always fun. So learning how to use organza in a different way is always exciting. So again, we run that satin stitch for the center of the middle posy. And we're going to pull that out so you guys can see what two flowers look like. Again, I'm gentle with that tape since it is taped across the delicate organza. If I can get my fingernail under it. There we go. And if I remove it off both flowers now, you can kind of see how they bump into each other and make that 3D look. Let's see if I hold it up here as well. So we're getting nice big blooms here. I probably should have made them a little smaller, but that's okay. Like I said, it's trial and error, and you can always cut them down as you go. We'll make the last one a little bit smaller. 
see if we can do something else with that. So again, I have to run my placement stitch for that last flower. And my needle tells me the position it's gonna be in will be underneath another set of petals. So I'm again gonna use that tape and just help hold those other pieces out of the way. Should probably do this where you guys can see what I'm doing. So again, take my tape. You can just drape it over the flower and stick it to anything solid, either the base fabric itself or the frame of the hoop. And then gently slide that back in. Again, watch the organza when you put your machine, um, your hoop back in so that way it doesn't catch on the posy bunch by the needle. And like everyone, sometimes we forget to hit the thread button. <laughs> so we need to hit that first. Since I started running a few stitches without it, I am gonna back that up just, just a hair. All right, now it's threaded. <laughs> so now we can get our placement stitch for it. So I have one more flower to do. And again, I'll cut another square piece out so I can show you guys from a square piece how this is done. So I'm just gonna take a small piece, probably about the size of that roll of tape, not much bigger. Make it a nice uneven looking square and then you can kind of round the edges out. We're then going to take our lighter. Of course, I picked a color that's hard to see. So if this is my general shape, you then can take your heat again and start cinching it inwards. If you're worried about your hands being near the item as well, you can also use tweezers and that'll give you a couple inches of distance. I'm not that bothered by it. It doesn't really burn you at all. You just feel warmth. But for those people who are not big fans of heat or fire, I want you to know there's options. You can still make this project. So you can just use a pair of tweezers or um, like craft forceps. They have different kinds that pinch. So there are some layers to that posy bunch. That's looking cute. And then again, we are going to take that last petal set. I need to add a bit more color to it. And line it up over the spot where that middle placement is. So right there. And then we're going to take our tape again and just kind of flatten it down. Working with all these organza layers. Got to make sure you're tape in the right spot. All right, so my stitch is going to go right in the center, kind of where my finger is at, if you guys can see that. And we are going to return the hoop for this last tacking stitch, and then I'll show you guys the final product and how to present it. So we're going to run the center of that posy stitch. I'm going to clean up my space a little for you guys so you're able to see it. All right, I think these are so cute and magical when they're finished. It's like a little bouquet that you made in your embroidery machine. No green thumb needed. It's the best part. All right, so it looks like a taped mess at first, but we're gonna start peeling away those layers of tape gently, and the bouquet will start to reveal itself. Like I said, my first flower was rather large, so they bump into each other a little bit. But there's my three posy bunches. Very cute, it looks like a full little bouquet in the watering can. There we go, now you guys can see that a little bit better. So very cute and dimensional, 3D. And so for finishing up the project, we are just going to pop it out of the hoop because again, it was on a base fabric and a tearaway stabilizer. And then from here, you can either do it the complicated way, which is measuring. I'm going to do it nice, quick, and easy because you guys are watching it live. So I'm just going to hoop the project and eyeball it to make it center and then trim the excess around it. But there are ways you can take a measurement and do it way more exact. To make it easier, I'm going to suggest you take the tear away and just remove it from the design. It is tear friendly, but be gentle with it. So mostly where the design is at, it can stay put. I just don't want all that excess going into the hoop when I have to press the hoop together. All right. So 
So now you can see I took some of that stabilizer away. If this was a present or a project I was displaying, I would be a little bit more meticulous about tearing it all out. But this way you guys can kind of see how it goes. I'm gonna position the top of my hoop at the top and take my posy bunch and kind of drape it over that. And another quick and easy way is to sit there and take your other frame. Oop, I did this backwards, didn't I? I did. That goes on the outside, this piece goes on the bottom. All right, so again, for practice purposes, this is just a demonstration. It won't be perfectly center for you guys, but that way you can see how it goes. We pop our top frame over the design. And again, you can fix that tension, make it nice and taut. I'm gonna actually lay it face down and pull my tight fabric. And then you can crank the tightener at the top of the hoop. So, finished result. If you were to trim up all the fabric, make it nice and neat, finished product. At least you wanna split screen or take away the split screen so they can see that. There we go. So look at how cute that is, you guys. So very pretty 3D bunch, of course. You can see my extra fabric here. Um, you can choose to do a stitch and pull it all in. If you trim some of this excess, I've seen it finished that way. And then you can also just trim it or hot glue as well. We've done that before at Anita where we pull all that excess and just hot glue it into the back of the hoop. So there is that 3D Posy Bunch. Again, this was the September of 2019 3D Posy Bunches by the Anita's Express line. Um, and this one is $10 off today until midnight Eastern Standard Time, as well as our other organza friendly collection, which was the Organza Garden released in June of 2019. That one is 50% off on our website. So go ahead and check out both of those awesome organza specials happening right now. Um, before you miss out and I hope you guys enjoyed this stitch out and we can't wait to see you next Wednesday for the next project. Have a great one you guys.